Today we're making woodland forest decor. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first project is going to be the wood fern. I've got some little moss rocks here. They came from Timu. This uh, originally came from Hobby Lobby. Of course, you know I thrifted it, right? You know that. Really cute. I love this fern with the little coils. This is a piece of wood that I, you know, found out and about. Cleaned it up. Be sure you start with a very clean piece. I'm going to use this moss mat and a raw edge wood piece. Some foam. Recycled foam, this is and some Gorilla Glue or any wood glue that you like and some hot glue. I'll start off by grabbing that piece of scrap wood that I found and just placing this on top of the round. The round is actually going to be the base and then we're going to put this toward the back and have our little fern arrangement right in the front. This is not difficult to do. Now if I would have had a good charge on my drill I would have went ahead and drilled some holes in here to hold it in place. But because I didn't, I'm going to make it work in another way. So I'm going to grab some of this foam. And this was actually in my satellite uh, box, my Starlink box. And I saved it. Uh, it's a very compact, clean cut type of foam. Doesn't leave any little scraps or residue flying all around the room. And I'm going to use this as supports in the back. Just because this particular piece of wood has three high points or points where it actually touches on the base and then it has a curved back. So we're going to use this to help stand it up and hold it in place. So I found the position and where it needs to be. I can go ahead and put those in place. You can use white foam too because this is going to be covered. So no worries and this wood round has been colored before and I've used it many many times and that's why it looks like it's been stained because it has been okay now I've got something for this to lean up against these three points that I'm showing you are the areas that actually sit flush on the bottom that's where we want to put our wood glue so I'm gonna add some here here and then one other point. Now I'm using the little stick because the spout is kind of messed up on my bottle. And I'm, I don't want to throw this bottle away just yet because there's some glue in here that is going to work fine. And this just is a little craft stick that I'm using to put it on. Also a paintbrush would work fine as well. Then I'll add some hot glue around it to put it in place. For information about the Crafty Cruise Getaway 2025, check my description box below. We would love to meet you there. All right, so now I'm just going to sit it down on the wood, propped against the pieces of foam that we have in the back. You can stack the foam up also. And I am just going to take the glue gun and almost like when you caulk around a bathtub, I'm going to do that here. I'm going to fill in the space with the hot glue all the way around the front edge because the back has the foam on it, so we don't need to do it there. And I'll just add, you know, let it dry a little bit, add another row on top of that, another row on top of that until it is stable, until that wood glue has a chance to set up. This is the next day. You can see I made a kind of a mess back there. But you can see that the hot glue is all dried. Got a good firm hold there. And we're going to start covering up this piece of wood with some of this moss mat. The moss mat and the moss rocks came from Timu. If you're not a Timu fan, I don't need to hear about it. You can find your moss mat and moss rocks wherever you want to. And you could probably just make your own moss rocks if you wanted to. Or use plain rocks. Whatever you like. I like the moss covered stones though. I am going to just take this and tuck this around. Almost like tucking it in in a few spots and then trimming it up where it needs to be trimmed. This is not a precise kind of thing. I'm just holding it down in place snugly and then picking up and gluing in those areas where it is touching either the back or the bottom. Protect your fingers because you know you may be using a lot of hot glue here. You maybe could use a different type of adhesive if you don't you know, if you're not a fan of hot glue, you could do that. But when you're working quickly, 
and you want to get a project done, hot glue is a pretty good option. Maybe try the Gorilla Glue Sticks if you have an issue with the glue. Now I'm going to take my scissors and go around. I'm just putting the blade on the edge of the wood and making sure that it's flat. Then I can lift up and cut that little under piece, which is black, trim it up just a little bit where it needs to be trimmed, and then I'll add some glue working out toward the edge. Now I have a nice even edge, and we can turn around and work on the back. I'm going to put a piece here, trim it down where it will go over the foam, almost like a little hill, and then I will glue that into place. We're going to glue it on the bottom and right over the top of the foam. This is going to make it look like it is glued right on top of the mat instead of the mat being glued around it. Maybe you could try gluing it down to the mat first if you wanted to, but I feel like the wood on wood contact with that, um, you know, the wood glue is gonna be the best way to keep this secure. And it is a rather fragile piece of wood so, you know, it fell out of a tree during a storm, so we're going to do the best we can to baby it, right? Then I'm just going to go around the edge and just, you know, cut off anything that really, really hangs out and gets in the way. Checking it out from all angles, making sure everything's glued where it needs to be. If you do miss anything when you start adding things later, you can just go back in and add a little bit more, right? We're not going to sweat the small stuff here. Now, please, please, whenever you get any greenery, no matter where you get it from, if you get it from Hobby Lobby or Walmart or Dollar Tree or Timu thrift store, wherever you get it from, please, please fluff it out. It's likely that it's been squished in a box and it is flat and it's not the way it looks in nature. So if you want your things to be a little more woodland looking and a little more like you had a better thought process, then go ahead and fluff those out. Now, I didn't have long enough staples here, so I'm using some very short nails to go through the stem part of this piece. And then I'm going to flood it with glue to make sure it doesn't move. Okay, now I'm going to take those little moss-covered stones and just add those in here. They're really not a whole lot of uh, purpose to where I put things, except that it did look like it fit there well. There's a little bit of glue still there that's damp, so all I had to do is add some under the front. Once I get it in place, I'm going to kind of play around with the fern because you know how I am with the fluffing of the greenery and the, and the flowers and bows. I'm a fluffer. And I'm just going to mess around with it and make sure the pretty sides are up and there's a wire in it, you know, give it a little, flex it a little bit, give it a little, a little life, a little movement. And then I decided to put the smallest little stone in the back, just for the heck of it. Whenever you have something like a fern or it has a lot of little tendrils hanging off, you can add a little bit of hot glue to hold those things in place in any particular place if you would like. And this is what we have so far. And this is definitely a place you could stop if you would like. I'm looking at it from all angles, making sure everything is stable and it is the way that I like it. And then I'll add another little stone in the front. It's like a small, medium, and large stone um, in the package. And then I have some little mushrooms that I've used previously and I have some more left. So I'll use some of these in the project. I'll find my placement and then I'll trim them, doing it at an angle so that it looks sort of like it's growing out the side instead of flat. Everything doesn't have to be flat, right? And then one a little bit shorter, and then I can glue them into place. These particular mushrooms came from Hobby Lobby on a very steep clearance, maybe last year, maybe the year before. I'm not entirely sure. But you can use the little fat ones that you get from Dollar Tree or just, you know, whatever mushrooms you have. If you're not a mushroom fan, you don't have to use them at all. Now, because there was a gap, I added a little more there just to kind of fill it in like there was a little hill. Which, you know, in your own little universe, your own little woodland area, you get to choose exactly what you want to put and where you want to put it. You could put some rocks in there, some gravel in there, or a fairy. Look at my little fairy. She's so cute. She's a little ginger fairy. And I think she's going to look cute in the little woodland scene. So she can go on top, 
going to try her in a bunch of areas to see where she's most comfortable and of course most stable because I don't want her to fall off and I like the idea of the mushrooms being like a little a little seat and a footstool do you say footstool or ottoman and are they the same thing I'm not entirely sure but I was raised up with the ones that look like a mustard color barrel and it was a footstool that's what it was and we loved rolling on it playing on it all the time papa threatened us with a fly flap if we didn't quit of course he never hit us with a fly flap because he would always giggle but you know he also called all of his girls his boys because he didn't have any grandsons <laughs> papa was a stinker I miss that man and now i think i like it like this i think this is a pretty good look and we can leave it just like this you know, if you don't want to use fairies, you don't have to. If you have some little woodland creatures, you know, if you have snails, frogs, um, if you want to go a little bit lighter, you could do butterflies, you could do squirrels, you could do foxes, owls, anything that you like to make it your own. Any way that your little heart desires. Just be sure you do make it your own. The next is going to be a leaf frame canvas. Look at this beautiful print. I love it. It's a bunch of moss-covered moss stones. I'm also going to take a 12 by 16 inch canvas. And the print is a 12 by 16 inch. See? And then this beautiful frame that I thrifted about a year ago. I've just been waiting to get these things out and use them so I could complete my bedroom. I'm doing that forest core look in my room. So... These prints are going to be beautiful in there, and I love the leaves. This is such an unconventional frame. It's so pretty, though. All right, so I'm going to take the original hanger off because it's going to be oriented in a different direction. I'm going to use Loctite because I've never used it before on something like this. I'm just now learning all the things you can do with it. So I'm just going to add a little of this, and I'm going to spread it out. It's a lot thicker than Mod Podge, and it dries quicker. So I'm trying it out and see what I think. And I will tell you, um, I had good results with this. And nothing came out. Now the thing is, it's not super tacky in the beginning. You need to put some weight on it. And you will see me do that. So I'm going to put some weight to make sure that it sticks to the canvas. But once you let it sit for a while, it stays there. I'm just going to use a little scrap wood and a couple of little garden stones just to kind of put some weight on there while I work on the other end in the other side. A little flat brush, just a bead about an inch way in, and then I'll just start putting this on here and spreading it out thin. I don't want there to be any little bubble areas in here. I want it to be nice and flat. But I don't have to go all the way behind the print, right? You don't have to go all the way behind. These two prints I got from Timu, but you can get your prints anywhere you like. Alright, so now to work on the frame while the rest is drying, I'm going to use some clear wax and a chippy brush. Of course, the frame has already been cleaned, and I'm going to take that and start working it into the wood. The wood is rather dry and uh, kind of dull looking, and I really want to bring that back to life, give it some richness, put that richness back in there, and I'm going to do that just by using this clear wax. You know when your hands are dry and they just look awful? Some people say they look ashy, they're just, you know, chalky looking. And you put lotion on and then it just immediately changes the appearance. They look so much younger and healthier. That's kind of what this does. It conditions that wood to really bring the life back to it. And so I like to use it um, in some of my projects. I put that wax on. You can let that dry overnight and then buff it out. If you have any areas that are scratched, you can use a little bit of your antiquing wax to go right over that area and fill it in. And it's as good as new. Yes, I'm very happy with that. So it needs to be set aside, and then like I said, once it's dry, it can be buffed. And I'm going to put my canvas on here. It's just going to kind of float over the back. It's just a little bit bigger than the back, so I should be able to just add some shallow staples here, like you see me doing. And then I'm going to put some hot glue on it, and I'll be using some little remnants of ribbon to go right over the top to just you know really make sure everything stays in place sometimes staples can pop out right so now for a hanger on the back i'll use a sawtooth hanger that i took off of another project 
And all you have to do is just find your close to center point and tap that in. And look at this beautiful, beautiful creation. I absolutely love this piece. That frame is just something. It just speaks to my heart with the leaves on it. And that rich wood. Yeah, I hope y'all like this one. It seems so simple to frame a canvas. But man, when you put your heart into it, it can bring you so much joy. Thank you, thank you to my channel members. You guys are the best. I appreciate your support more than you know. The next is a canvas sign. So I have another print here. And it is of a creek or a stream with some, of course, moss covered stones. This is a thrifted sign that I got at Goodwill, but you can see it came from Big Lots, I think, originally. I'm gonna take all that stuff off the back and I'm going to remove this piece. Now this is just cloth and you can certainly take the cloth pieces and uh, save them and use them on another project, but I'm just gonna use a little utility knife and I'm going to score down the side all the way up to the side there and trim it up. If you're enjoying this content and this video and other videos I've made, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel and help me reach my goal of 100,000 by October the 31st. Thank you so much. All right, so now we've got our palette nice and clean. You can see some little glue areas on there in the middle, but you can sand that off if you need to, uh, run a little sander over it if you need to. Um, for now, I'm just gonna leave that alone and I'm going to grab my antiquing wax in a sponge brush and in that area that it is going to overlap but not entirely cover this is wider than 12 inches it's probably 14 inches so we need to fill in that space and i'm going to do that with some antiquing wax on the edge and i'm also going to take that same antiquing wax and go all over the top and bottom boards here I'm going to tap a little bit of extra on the edges, and you see that gives it a bit more of a shadow. We'll do the same thing here. And remember, start off with clean pieces. And then I'm going to add a little bit more on the edges, just for a little depth and dimension. And right on the outer surface. Now, right on the inside of that board, there's a little area that I need to add to, but I don't want to put too much on to have it interfere with the glue sticking down on the canvas, you know, to the piece. I don't want anything peeling up, so I don't want to get that in the way. I'm just gonna use a little skinny brush here to do that. Make sure we don't leave anything bald or uncolored. So here we go with the Loctite again. I'm gonna go right inside of the lines where we put that wax on and then layer just, you know, right over it if I need to. And I'm gonna put this down right here. This has already been trimmed up to be the size that's going to fit on the inside. It is about, I think I ended up cutting like two and a half or three inches off, um, but I cut it, cut it on the bottom section of it so my treetops wouldn't be sliced. And then I'm starting on the top and then we're going to put some on the bottom and I'm feeling a little more confident this time with the Loctite. I know that it's going to do what it's supposed to do, so I'm just going to go ahead and just slap it on there, right? We're slapping it on. This does not have to be pretty at all. Y'all, who got bad weather yesterday? Oh my goodness, I was a nervous wreck the entire day. I should have got this video finished yesterday, but no, I finished it today because I couldn't think of anything else yesterday but the weather. It was crazy business. Thank goodness I had some friends who just talked me down. Um, Trish and Kay and Kendra, they talked me down. I was just worried to death and, you know, I was in good hands though, and I knew that. You know, sometimes when you're scared, you just don't think straight. Okay, let's get that a little time to dry, right? And then we're going to go over it with some more of that wax. Now for this one, we're going to do some shadowing. We're going to also go right around the edge and sort of blend. Because sometimes the edge of a canvas has like a white, white line around it. And I want that to just go away. I want it to just blend out and go away. So I'm going to use my little sponge brush with that antiquing wax and I'm sort of moving it, kind of twisting the little sponge part back and forth because I don't want a pattern to form as I'm doing it, right? If that makes sense to you, if you've ever done like stenciling or whatever or pouncing around with the brush, I don't want that to make a pattern. 
okay? So you'll see me kind of twisting it back and forth as I lay it down. Don't worry about areas that get a little bit heavier because you're going to take a brush just like this and you're going to blend it out. What I'm doing is just kind of blending it. You let it sit there for a minute, you know, and then you're going to blend it out. So that's, that's, that's what you see. I'm dragging a little bit of that wax onto the inside of the picture. I'm also rounding the corners on the bottom and on the top. And then I'm going to very, very lightly go all the way across on the front of this canvas. This is, we did not do this on the first one, right? That one was easy peasy. This one, we're just going to add a little bit of shading and shadowing. This is going to make it a little bit darker and it's going to make it a little bit richer. But my goodness, y'all, again, with an inexpensive canvas and a thrifted piece, look at, look at this. This is beautiful. You know, of course, that's my opinion, but I think this is a really lovely piece, and it is going to be very loved in my bedroom. Believe me, yes, it's going to be in there. And for those of you who are asking about my, med my bedroom makeover, I've got a couple more things I need to get in order to get the room finished, but I have not forgotten, and you will get to see my bedroom tour and everything that we put in there since I flipped it from like a cottage core to the forest core okay so y'all stay tuned for that the next is a birdhouse flip i did this birdhouse year before last i think it was in 2022 i made this i put it on the candle stand i did the paint technique and all that with it which was perfectly fine it looked great for rustic farmhouse we're going to change this to give it a little bit more of that woodland look so we're going to use mosses we're going to use pieces of wood. Now this wood, um, I think originally probably came from Target and then antiquing wax. I'm also going to need some clippers, wood scraps, little pieces of twigs, or like this placemat is a twig placemat. This is going to work perfect. I decided to use this since it's already together. Now in order to do that, since I know I want to cover around it, I'm going to grab my little Crafty Cruise getaway ruler here. And I'm going to measure around there how wide the birdhouse is all the way around. Then I'm going to measure and lay it down here. And I'm going to measure how much I need here. And then I'm going to cut down. But listen, if you don't have a mat like this, you can just glue regular sticks on there. So don't be too concerned about what I'm doing. But you do need the measurements, right, to know how much to use. Then I'm going to measure from the top to bottom edge, inner edge, to know how tall to cut these. Make sense? So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'll take whatever type of cutter that I have and I'm gonna be using a combination of these little clippers like this and then my bull nose cutters, which are the blue handle ones. As I go through here, it took me a minute. I'm not gonna lie about it, it took me a minute. But once I got it done, I was so happy with it. So we're gonna start on the side of the opening. I'm going to lay it down here, and all I'm going to need is some hot glue to put it together. Gorilla Glue is going to be your friend if you want to put this like on a covered porch, which is probably what I'll do, but I really like it. I may leave it in here in my studio so I can look at it. Then you're going to go all the way around, gluing that down, a bead at the top, a bead at the bottom. And I'm just going to cut the little bird piece off here because this is actually going to be a little more of a fairy home rather than a birdhouse. But if you want to keep it as a birdhouse, use the same idea here, but leave your little stand right there and work around it, okay? you Can you understand what I'm saying about that part? Okay, it's not going to be a functioning, it's a decorative birdhouse. So I'm taking my antiquing wax and I'm going over what looks like something that would go like in a nautical piece, like that light bleached kind of wood. And I am going to do all of the wood in that antiquing wax and I'm going to let it dry overnight. You could also use a stain or whatever you would like to use for that. I'm going to take some of these twig pieces that came from Dollar Tree. Got a bag of them. And uh, that is a purchase that I make over and over again because I love to use the wood pieces. But you could cut something out of your yard, you know, you don't have to buy it. I'm going to put a little top piece and I'm going to use some little bottle pe bottom pieces. And I'm going to use three on the bottom, one at the top. It is going to look sort of like steps, which I like, only they're not going to be exactly steps. They'll be more decorative. And then um, they're going to help cover up that empty spot 
where we took the little um, the little twig out where a bird would stand, right? All right, now I've left enough space in there that I can put something, and believe it or not, this is a napkin holder. I thrift these because they're good for so many things. So when you find one that's not in a set of four or more, not a big deal. This is a round piece that works great for a lot of stuff. So I just put that right over the hole. It is the perfect diameter with a little hot glue and let that dry. Here are the pieces the next day. Nice and richly colored. And these are going to be the shingles we use for the top of the house. So I know I keep wanting to use the word thatched, but that is not correct because we're not actually using like a hay or that, tor that type of a product on the top of it. But we're going to put wood on there and we're going to fill in with moss, y'all. Mm, this was so much fun. Took a little while, but it was worth it. I love the look. Okay, so I'm going to put some of the pieces where they're, they look kind of broken on the edges. It's going to give it character. So I want to put some of those pieces outward and on the bottom, right? We want those little pieces to show. We want all the imperfections to show as if the little fairy just flew around. And as the little pieces were falling off, she added one here. She added one there until her house was perfect. I'm going to start on the bottom because we're going to overlap each row until we get all the way up to the top. So you can see how that row is going to look. And there's an overhang of about mm, probably a half to three quarters of an inch. Here it is all the way filled. And then now we're going to go up to the next row and you just overlap. I'm just trying pieces. Uh, what you see is me actually just gluing the piece on. But I try each piece before I glue it on to make sure that it is going to be the right size. Keeping in mind that you need to have this still in a conical type shape when you apply them, right? So you're going to go all the way around, and you can see there are long pieces and short pieces and gaps. And I don't mind that. I like that, and I'm okay with that. It makes the perfect little spots for moss to just nest down in there. Okay, we're going to make a chimney. So let's grab another one of those pieces of wood, and we're just going to make one right in the top by hot gluing it in a spot that doesn't have a piece of wood. Perfect. Easy, easy. We're going up to the top just overlapping and adding all the way up to the top. Again, we're not looking for perfection. We want this to be rustic. We want this to look like, you know, a little random pine cone maybe. Okay, now I'm just taking the little glue strings off of it. You don't have to do this part if you don't want, but I like to get them out of my way because I'm a picker and I'll sit there and pick on them if I don't. So I'm going to take a moss mat, and I'm just going to start cutting off strings and strands of it. You can use the loose moss that you get at Dollar Tree, but put on your finger protectors and protect your hands, okay? Be sure you protect your little fingers. And there you go. That's how we do it, y'all. Those little pink finger protectors came from Dollar Tree. So the benefit, one of the many benefits of having moss, because, I mean, who doesn't want moss on a woodland piece? If you have any gaps that were left around when you were putting your wood pieces on, you can fill that right in with that moss. I mean, they don't want wind just blowing in through their house. They want to be nice and cozy when it's cold outside. So we're going to use moss and it's going to fill in the little spots around there that need to be filled in, right? I'm tucking it under there, right up to the top and right up underneath where the lip originally was on this piece. Can y'all think of something you have in the house that you can flip and make something different? I mean, it used to fit my style perfectly, but as my style changed, my needs changed, right? And I need to use this little birdhouse. So I'm just gonna go with it and we're gonna change it up a bit. We'll be tucking moss in all on the inside. Find a little space, tuck a little moss. Easy, huh? Find a little space, tuck a little moss. You could actually tuck some leaves in here if you wanted to. Little pieces of artificial vines. You could put little flowers in here. Um, whatever you want. You want to add another little bit of personality. Some little mini pine cones would be adorable around here. Think of all the possibilities. You know, things don't always have to be something that you always see. You know, you, we can use our imaginations, right? We can use our imaginations. It's okay. Just because we're not kids anymore doesn't mean we have to get rid of that, that youthful happiness and joy that we used to have. 
No, we can have that as adults. And look, I love my little house. Look how cute. And then all the little empty spots where it didn't meet in a perfect, uh, you know, point at the top, I just filled it in with some moss and shaped it myself. So now we're going to go right around here with some moss as well. And you can see this moss mat I, hover, I have over here. This is the favorite moss mat that I have bought. I have used it on many projects and I absolutely love this moss and I will be ordering more. By the way, if you are interested in any, in any of this moss, um, I have a video that I will link for you where I did the Timu haul with all this greenery in it. And I'll link it for you so you can look up the information and see what it's called and all that if, you, if you'd like to. This is not a sponsored video though, so you know, no worries there. Get your moss wherever you like. You could use Spanish moss, reindeer moss, green moss. If you have colored moss, and because I know you can buy where they dye the moss, you can do that. You can make this as mystical or as natural as you would like. It's just fun to do it. I'm I just envisioning the life of the little fairy who lives here, you know? Or the fairy family, possibly. I'm going to go all over there until that is covered, but it still has a nice opening to easily go in and out of. It looks so snuggly and beautiful and warm and inviting, you know. If you were a little fairy, it'd be a nice little place to hang out. So we're going to do the same thing on the bottom, all the way around. And then I decided we're going to go ahead and color all this as well. You don't have to, but I like the richness of all the wood around it. So we're just going to take a smaller brush so that it fits inside of each one of those little branches. And we're actually coloring what is underneath there as well. So I'm coloring over the thread, the wood are the little twigs and then the little house that's underneath there is getting some color too because the little bristles on this paintbrush allow me to get straight down in there and all those little places and look at the difference between the woods you could leave yours however you want you could even paint this a color if you wanted to Y'all, I really encourage you to make things your own. I say it all the time, but I really mean it. And you do not have to spend a fortune to buy some boutique pieces when you can most likely make it on your own. I'm going to add a little wax right there on those little wood pieces, too, to blend it in. This is how the little birdhouse flip looks with the little chimney and all the beautiful moss and a new roof line. All, look at all those little broken edges and pieces just like maybe this home was from something that was foraged out in the woods I love this and I love you guys too thank you so very much for stopping by and hanging out with me today I appreciate your time and I appreciate you bye